Hi Chewies, here's your Alexandra and today is the day where I present to you the painting tutorial on the Black Reach Captain alias the Blood Ravens Captain. So uh, as you can see I haven't glued uh, this part here in already. That's because um, I want to uh, paint this separately. Well if this is on, uh, it's almost impossible to paint uh, here between the legs and uh, the cloak uh, behind him. So, until this is painted, uh, he will be loose. Also, his backpack is still loose. <clears throat> what I will do first is uh, prime this uh, miniature in grey. With a grey spray primer from Army Painter. Doesn't matter what color exactly. So, be right back. Okay, after the primers dry, I will start by painting in the base coat for the cloak in uh, the foundation paint Calfarm Brown. It's a good undercoat uh, for a, a beige or bleached bone coat, cape and yeah, simple, very simple task. Just pick your brush and paint the inside and the outside of the cloak in Calfarm Brown. Be right back. When this is done. Now that the cloak is painted or base coated, I'm going to base coat the armor. And for that, I use my handy dandy trusty mix out of Macrite Red and a little bit of black. <coughs> this is a very dark red tone, as you can see. And that is a good undercoat for every red armor, be it now a blood, la blood raven like him or a blood. Angel or World Eater or whatever. So simple as that, just paint it on on all the armor parts that need to be red. As usual, be right back. So does it look uh, after the red is applied and now it's time for painting in some shadows and for that instance I'm using Devlin Mud and I'm going over all the red parts and I'm looking for pooling the wash in the recesses <coughs> and to drag off the most of the excess from the plain parts This is also a very easy step, <coughs> but now be patient with it. Uh, we don't want to have uh, too many of the, too much of the devil and mud on the rope or anything else. This time only the armor. So <coughs> I will finish this and be back when he's dry. The wash is dry now, and now it is time to start highlighting the rope and for that instance I use a 50-50 mix of Calthan Brown and Deneb Stone, both foundation colors. So, and for that instance I leave the recesses of the cloak in the Calthan Brown. So we have a shadow in there. So. I will do that for the whole cloak, inside and the outside, and also on the part here, on the front torso. So. <coughs> I'll be right back when this is done. Okay, Jewies, so does the cape now look? Do you see all the recesses are in the dark color? Also here on the chest plate. So, and now it's time to give the uh, red armor the appropriate red color. And for that I use scab red. So. I start painting in 
the skip red and over the uh, mac red red it should cover quite well and keep in mind to uh, leave the recesses dark so leave uh, a little bit of the old color behind and also the recesses with a Devlin mud wash so <coughs> I'll finish up this and be right back does it look after the scab red <coughs> and now we will go on highlighting the armor even more with now a 50-50 mix of blood red and scab red and we will put the color on the even higher parts of the armor and as usual I've watered down the color a little bit so that it uh, can be applied more smoothly so and uh, let me shortly check well okay then there a little bit I want to check what uh, is actually seen from the armor <coughs> when the front part is attached so like that here a little bit there a little bit So you have the general indication. I will finish up uh, the rest of the parts, and as usual, be right back. Okay, Jewies. Now let's go for the last highlights in blood red. So just the very top parts. will be painted in the blood red. Overall we want to have a dark armor because blood ravens have a much darker armor than blood angels. And in that case the blood red is only the last highlight where by blood angels maybe an orange or vomit brown uh, would be the final highlights. So there a little bit, here a little bit. So okay, now here for the torso. for the backpack a little bit on the exhausts ah, there I need a little bit water on my brush <coughs> to blend the color better in like that yeah I guess that's okay so same on the other side, painting in the highlight, making the brush a little bit wet, not too much, and then blending the edge. Ah, there's a little bit less in the middle, but that is easy to fix, so, like that. Here the down end okay. 
here a little, there a little. Okie dokie. And I think for the backpack that's it. And overall the armor is highlighted. See if I can attach now the body or if there's still something in the way. Oh uh, yeah, okay, I will paint that here before I attach the body actually. So okay, the next thing uh, will this metal part and some other details in gold be. So, be right back. There, I'm already back. So, for painting gold, uh, it is very important to have a good undercoat. Um, I will use now a mixture 50-50 out of Calcium Brown and Tin Bits as a base coat for this particular gold tones here. In some of my other videos, you see me use Bestial Brown or Tin bits, or a mixture out of pastel brown and tin bits, or I use a mixture of a dwarf bronzer and brown, or well, to be honest, it doesn't matter what color you exactly use, as long as the uh, the surface you want to paint in gold is in a um, some kind of metallic brownish tone, so that the uh, Gold actually covers better on the uh, on the surface, and I'm using now a foundation color and tin bits mix for better coverability over the gray primer. So, well, here we go, and I'm going to paint now all the gold areas on the miniatures. Uh, speaking of which, here the killer, here the little uh, wing, and. Uh, the podium of the sword and uh, let's see the Aquila here on the breastplate and some other details. So I will undercoat this and be right back. All the gold details are now base coated as you can see here and there. <coughs> and what I will do now is I will cover all the gold areas now with my own gold mixture. It is a mixture out of equal parts tin bits, dwarf bronzer and burnished gold. <coughs> if you don't have burnished gold, shining gold will do it as well. That doesn't matter. And as you can see, that gold color covers quite well. I will go over all the gold parts with it. <coughs> And as usual, I'm back when all the gold is painted. As you can see, the gold looks now <coughs> very even. And now it's time to give it a little bit shadow and uh, more gold feel to it. And for that instance, I just simply cover the gold areas now with a Griffon Sepia wash. That gives the... Uh, go to a much more rich tone and the gold will pop out much more brilliant after that quite easy just go over the gold parts so and this effect is the best when the surface is rough, like here the sword pommel or sword handle, however you call it. <laughs> so, here the skull. Then this one here. It wouldn't be a GW model if there are not at least 20 skulls on there. <laughs> I guess that's the design philosophy of the Warhammer 40k universe 
more skulls. <laughs> if it's not looking good, put on more skulls. I wonder if there are models without even any skull. Well, uh, I guess there will be some, but it's a rare occasion. So, I will let this gold now dry and be right back. Now it is time to uh, paint a little bit on the shoulder pads. And I will start that by applying a little bit of snake bite leather over the shoulder pads. That's a base coat for the bleached bone that will be following after this. <coughs> and the color is a little bit too dry, so water in it are much better and much smoother in the color transition. So, I will finish this up and after that I will attach the body to the marine. So, be right back. Step by step this little captain looks more and more finished. What I'm doing now is I paint the little uh, shooter cord or how it is called I don't know uh, in vomit brown this is also a undercoat color and will be given a wash after that I think I will go ahead with Devlin mud after this is dry so I will finish this up and give it a wash and be right back when this is done. Just to let you know, this is now the day number three that I'm working on this miniature. <laughs> the, yesterday I finished painting the rope on this, this cord. <coughs> it is just played. And what I'm doing now here is uh, I prime the blade of the sword with Orchide Shade, the Games Workshop foundation color, <coughs> to give it a good nice undercoat for the green weapon. I'm painting now a green weapon because of two things. First of all, uh, well, to red armor green is a, a nice contrast, and on the second thing, this might interest uh, all the Necron players out there. Yeah, the new codex is out, and well, there are a few green power weapons to paint, and here I just want to show you again how to paint a green power weapon. So, I will let that dry now and uh, be right back in a second. Okay, Tewis, the green undercoat from the Orchid Shade is now done. And what I will do now is uh, further pre prepare the uh, surface here for a little wet blending. And for that instance, I <clears throat> Use a very, very thin uh, coat of snot green and paint in the middle parts where the middle green color would be on the blade. <clears throat> Here and there. This is just the undercoat. I want to uh, wet blend this blade and it is better to have a good undercoat for that. <coughs> so the colors will shine out better. So, like that. So, and on the <coughs> brightest parts I use now a scorpion green, also a very thin layer. First on the top here, like right there, then down here, like that, also 
the other side here the green the bright green scorpion green and down here so and also on the opposite side uh, I will put here the bright green and again here the metal green so this needs to dry now this needs to be totally dry <coughs> and then we go on with a wet blending this surfaces so Now you see that I go over the areas a second time so to give it a better undercoat so that it's covering better. Okay. So I guess that looks good. I'll let that dry and be right back. Now we're going on to the wet blending. For the wet blending I use uh, three colors, Dark Angels Green, Snot Green and from Vallejo model uh, colors <coughs> Yellow Green, this here, this is the number. So I'm applying first here Dark Angels Green and you see the color is uh, quite watered down. So then you need to be fast, <coughs> apply the Snot Green here on this area, wash your brush out and then fast mix in the two colors directly on the blade right here and you're pulling back the color down to the <coughs> dark and it's green and you're mixing and mixing and mixing until it is in very nice and even transition so you could go back and apply more of the original colors. So sorry when I'm sometimes a little bit out of focus. So and again. Well, I think that's, that's okay. So, now we go for the bright part. Again here, applying the snot green. <coughs> and then the yellow green. Here, a good layer. <coughs> and then I'm pulling down the yellow green the snot green and mixing it directly on the blade. <coughs> Sometimes wash out the brush again and repeat the process until it is an even transition. Just mixing color directly on the plate. Like that. And there we are. We have a good solid color transition from a dark green to a very very bright green. So I will finish up uh, the whole blade now and be right back. How does the blade look when the wet blending is done? On all sides. And now it is time uh, to paint in the metal parts. And for that I use chain mail. Here just this electrode here that emits the power. <laughs> just use the side of the brush and gently go over it. 
There we go. So <clears throat> now I will uh, go on paint all the other metal parts on the uh, miniature with chainmail. <clears throat> like here the uh, bolter ammunition box and some parts of the bolter and here and there some parts. Be right back. Come to the fifth day of painting the captain. What I will do now is uh, give the banner a wash of devil and mud to uh, start with the shadows and the folds from this banner. <coughs> Just an easy step. Like everything's very easy. <laughs> <coughs> if you know how to do it, painting is not a hard thing to do. Like I always said, don't fear the paint, don't fear the brush. Everybody can paint. It's just a matter of picking up the brush and doing the right thing. So, now the big side. This gives a nice undercoat for the other colors that we will apply to the banner. <coughs> so, and after this is dry, we will go on with that. But now we will start to work on the face for our little captain here. <coughs> The reason why I tell you at which day I'm here at the painting stage is just to simply show you guys how long it takes to make a painting tutorial for such a uh, well-decorated character model. Normally, if I want to paint a normal space marine, a tutorial for that is done in about, well, an hour. But to paint a character model, that may take much, much longer. And for all of you that keep asking me, why don't you make a painting tutorial on blah, and blah, and blah, and blah. It's simply because of the fact the videos would be <laughs> one or two hours long. And for me, that would uh, mean... Well, at least a week or two on painting only this uh, miniature and uh, all the people out there that uh, want frequently <coughs> my videos to come out, they will be waiting and waiting and waiting. Like for example, uh, this week I have at least three people uh, that had asked me, uh, told me that they have unsubscribed because my um, <coughs> my videos are going uh, much better because well I I honestly made some uh, quick videos here and there just to uh, give you something while I'm painting on this here so <laughs> um, well before I go to the face I will now finish up the shoulder pad with bleached bone just simply paint over it and leave the uh, recesses here, this little lines in the snake bite leather. So, and uh, you might notice I already painted the bolt pistol in black and also the hair of the little captain. You haven't seen that because I accidentally forget to hit the record button. Well, that happens. But it's nothing major you have missed. <laughs> so, I will finish up the shoulder pads now and be right back. Okay, Jubies, now let's paint the face. I will start uh, with a base coat out of terracotta 
but you could also use a dark flesh or a mixture out of dwarf flesh and bestial brown or well whatever kind of a brownish reddish color is a base coat it doesn't really matter so this will be <coughs> a good base coat color for applying all the other highlights So, and now we finally have met the point where our nice captain here has no gray left on him. <laughs> so, <coughs> okay, our base coat is now done. Now let's uh, start to highlight and for that I use, um, let's say, elf flesh. So, I will just mix in some elf flesh into the terracotta when I open the pot here ah. okay long, no long use <laughs> so I can show you right here uh, there we have it a little bit of our flesh and focus <laughs> so there we go our first <coughs> highlight flesh color and start applying it and keep in mind to leave a little bit of the terracotta or dark flesh or whatever you have as a base coat to leave behind in the recesses so just like that and uh, as a brush, I use a, this time a sort of a standard brush. So he has a little bit finer brush tip than my usual base coat brush I use. Okay. Now we go on with adding <coughs> elf flesh to the color. Like that. And always keep in mind to... Uh, well, when you mix colors, it's always good to have a little bit of the old color left behind. So when you want to try to uh, fix mistakes, you always can grab those colors. So, <coughs> going on. And always keep a little bit of the old color behind. Sometimes I feel like a, a how it is called in English, hmm. <coughs> like an old vinyl disc with a <coughs> with a scratch in it. I keep repeating myself. So huh? that looks good. <coughs> now we take pure elf flesh. Here on the nose, there, only the highest spots, <coughs> there we go, nice painted face. So now I need bleached bone, so. Last and final highlights here at the tip of the nose, for example. There, a little bit. Just like that. <coughs> See, that, that gives the whole miniature character. And also we will use the bleached bone for the eye itself. <coughs> so, 
<clears throat> and a little bit on the teeth like that okay so now we need a tiny little black drop <clears throat> on the tip of the brush <laughs> Uh, you see here at the tip of the brush there's a tiny little dot sometimes that applies to a brush and you have to remove this because that could ruin what you want to do now painting in the eyeball all like that and ta-da his face is painted. Okay, let's go on to the next part. Um, uh, right now I'm uh, still waiting for this to dry, but uh, in the meantime you can also give uh, all the metal parts now a wash of part of the black. And I'll be right back. 